Hey everyone, this is Faze and welcome to my channel. This is the all new M4 iPad Pro and I'm using it with the all new Magic Keyboard. And to be honest, I quite like it. Now, I've been using the previous iPad Pros with the Magic Keyboards as well, but this year, they've done a major upgrade. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a full review on the new iPad Pros Magic Keyboard. And let's first talk about the design. And I want to first take a look at the exterior of the Magic Keyboard. So overall, it looks and feels basically like the previous Magic Keyboard. There's nothing completely different about it when you first look at it. It's the same brilliant cantilever design that makes the screen seem to float over the keyboard. It looks very sleek and modern. However, I'm not a big fan of this material. I have to be very honest. I feel like they could have used something that was a lot more premium and uh, felt a little more luxurious in its hefty price. Because in the previous Magic Keyboards that I've used, the material doesn't hold up quite well. Now, another thing you're going to notice right away is this hinge. The hinge is no longer covered with the rubber material, and I like that because the exposed aluminum finish looks much nicer. The hinge is also flatter and not rounded like the previous Magic Keyboard, and the USB-C port within it has changed its orientation. This 13-inch M4 iPad Pro weighs nearly a quarter of a pound less than its predecessor. So this new Magic Keyboard also comes in a half a pound less than the previous one. Put them together and the new tablet in its keyboard case weighs just 2.3 pounds, compared to just over 3 pounds for the previous combo. It's a very noticeable difference and you feel it immediately. Also, compare that weight to the 2.7 pounds of the 13-inch MacBook Air, and you'll see that this is Apple's lightest computer. Now, there's a slight difference in size as well. This new Magic Keyboard measures 0.5 inches thick with the tablet inside, while the original model is 0.6 inches. However, it's not quite as thin as the MacBook Air, which comes in at 0.44 inches. All right, so now let's open this up. Now, when you open it up, that is where you see the true magic. The first thing that I noticed is this aluminum surface for the palm rest and the keyboard enclosure. It's silver for the white model and space black for the black one. Now for this 13 inch version, you get plenty of room for a nice keyboard. The key area is 10.6 inches wide and most keys are 0.6 inches square. There's 0.12 inches of space between the keys. Apple's Magic Keyboards use a scissor mechanism so the typing experience is nice and clicky. The one small downside is that there's not much key travel. However, if you're accustomed to a MacBook, you probably won't even notice. Overall, the typing experience is just like the previous keyboard, and that's a good thing. However, the experience is enhanced by two new key features. One is the addition of the function row keys. These half-size function keys across the top of the number keys are a long overdue addition. Virtually every third-party keyboard out there for the iPad has had them for years, and I'm so glad that it's finally here on the Magic Keyboard. I no longer have to touch the screen at all for basic controls because now I can finally control music, adjust the screen backlight, lock the device, or even open the app switcher in a snap. It's very convenient. The second feature is a new trackpad, which is now bigger and made of glass. It measures 4.4 inches by 2.6 inches, which makes it noticeably larger than the one on the previous Magic Keyboard. The glass trackpad doesn't move, but haptic feedback makes it feel like it does when I tap on it. The surface vibrates slightly. Now, if you've used a MacBook before, then this isn't new at all. The trackpad registers my finger movements and it taps perfectly. It's a major new improvement, and the one in the earlier Magic Keyboard just doesn't feel that great anymore after using this one. However, there is one thing that I wish they improved, and that is the USB-C port. This Magic Keyboard, like the previous, has one, but it's still of limited use because all it can do is just charge the iPad. I really wish I could use it to plug in an external monitor or a flash drive, but with the Magic Keyboard, I can keep the iPad charged up while I have another USB-C accessory plugged into the iPad itself. Lastly, let's talk about the pricing, which is quite hefty. At $350, it's about a quarter of the cost of the base model M4 iPad Pro itself. However, I will say that it's a beautifully designed keyboard and it's extremely functional. And yes, though expensive, I do think it's worth it. 
Also for the 11 inch model, it's $50 less at $300. All right, so ultimately this new Magic Keyboard is really, really nuts. It also feels a lot thinner and lighter. Um, overall, the package seems quite nice and I genuinely like it. And I think the typing experience is great, especially with a new larger trackpad, you know, the aluminum surface and uh, the function row keys. All of that really enhances the experience. Now, is it infinitely better than the previous Magic Keyboard? To be honest, yes, because I really do like the fact that you have your function row keys. It makes it far more laptop-like I am a video editor, so it feels really nice to have a larger trackpad with haptic feedback. And the aluminum surface just gives it that premium feel that I've really been wanting from a Magic Keyboard. It doesn't feel cheap. It actually feels a lot more premium. Yes, the material on the exterior could be nicer, but overall, I'm kind of happy with what I'm seeing here. So at the end of the day, I want to know your thoughts as well. What do you think of the new Magic Keyboard? Do you like it? Do you did you expect more from Apple? Whatever your thoughts are, leave them down in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for more videos and content coming up on the new iPad Pro. And I'll see you next time.